<laughs> Hi. So I found another walnut bowl. I think it's about time to do some more turning. It should be kind of fun. This one I did several years ago, and I, I think it's pretty well dried. It's you, you can kind of you can see how warped it is, and it, it it's actually kind of compressed in in one direction more than the other. I think I think it's 13 inches this way and 14 inches this way. So, um, but it should turn okay. This one hasn't cracked at all, so I, I could just turn it the way it is. But what I'm thinking I'd like to do is to put a lip on it with uh, with a segmented pattern around the top. I thought that'd be kind of nice because it's a little bit of a flat bowl. I mean, that'd be okay the way it is, but it would be fun to do some kind of mixing where it's a solid piece and, and then some, some segmented patterns, which would be kind of neat. So we'll do that. What I wanted to do with the pattern was to have the darker wood of the bowl and a lighter wood of the rim kind of mixed together. So some sort of crenellated pattern or sort of zigzag pattern or something like that. The vision that I kept having was some kind of zigzaggy pattern. What I ended up with was a system of two points per segment and then a, a wider space of light wood between each segment. In doing these segments, I wanted them to work where I wouldn't be turning end grain. I think in the, in the past when I've made a pattern of segments, I've made a basically a sausage, <laughs> a long strip of wood that has the pattern within it, and then from that I slice off the pieces that I need. But in doing this, I made each segment separately so that I could have the grain running with the circumference of the bowl. Now, in doing the little walnut pieces, I could just cut all of those because they had the same angle on each side. But for the two pieces of birch on each side of the segment, I had to cut the angled side and a vertical side. So I set up one saw with an angle on it, and then I could walk around to the other saw and cut the vertical piece. So it was a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth kind of a thing to do all 12 segments. But of course I needed two sides, so I needed 24 of these pieces. And then once I had all the pieces cut, they went together like this. And I thought I was going to have some problems clamping these because of the angle. And the glue would sort of be like a lubricant in there. And the, I would clamp it and the pieces would slide around. That ended up, I, I think my angle was steep enough that I could just clamp the two ends on pretty much all of them. And it worked just fine. So this is the first one, and I tried clamping the end and then kind of clamping it down to the table so it wouldn't slide around. But what I found was I didn't really have to do this second clamp. I could just clamp the ends, and it worked just fine. So this is the clamps coming off, and then I have all my segments made. I sanded the front and back so that I could set them on my sled again to cut the angle to make the segments fit into a ring. So I have 12 segments, which works into 30 degrees of angle that I need on each segment. So each side needs a 15 degree angle. And I made the segments for a solid ring as well that'll go on top. So this is how the segments go together. And for gluing, I found instead of trying to spread the glue, I could just kind of put a blob of glue on and then kind of massage the, the pieces together. And that worked worked well and it was quicker than than being finicky with with each piece there's the pattern ring glued up and then I'll do the solid ring and it's the same process of gluing that up so now I have the two rings glued and you can see how they're gonna go on the pattern ring is upside down in this shot but you get the idea next I had to flatten out the rim of the bowl so that I could glue the rings to the bowl so I put the face plate on the back on the bowl again, trying to find the center. And it was just a matter of flattening out the rim, which was pretty warped. So I got that as flat as I could on the lathe, and then I put it on the disc sander to get the, the surface parallel to itself, so that the rings would glue to it nice and flat. And I sanded the rings. Once those were ready, I could glue everything together. And I got a nice, even layer of glue between the rings and between the bowl. For clamping this, what I found I can do is cut a piece of wood that's the height of the whole system and a piece of wood that's the width of my table. Clamp that together and that, that little spacer piece allows me to not have to balance two clamps at once. 
and it actually works really well and it's really easy and super simple. And where I just have two glue joints like this, it doesn't slide around too much, so it, it works just fine. And I could cut off the excess of the rings. I could turn this off, but it's a little quicker just to cut it off in the bandsaw. Now it's time to turn. And you can see how out of round it is. I started by working on the outside and I got that nice and round. And then I worked on the face and got that running smooth. And then from there I started working on the inside. Most of this project is in the rim. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time working on the shape of what the rim was going to be like. And the thought that I had was because I had a, a pattern that was kind of pointy and had little sharp bits, I wanted to do a kind of round shape on the actual shape of the rim and the bowl so that those two forms would contrast with each other. So I brought the rim around and kind of towards the inside of the bowl on a gentle curve. And then I smoothed out the inside. It really didn't take a whole lot of turning. I just had to get it round. And then I ran the scraper over everything to get the surface smooth. And it sanded and sanded. I like using the drill with a piece of sandpaper on it because you get a random pattern of sanding on the bowl. And I did some very fine sanding. I think I got up to 600 grit. And I took the faceplate off. Now I need to work on the bottom. So I measured the bowl and I found that I had about an inch and a quarter of thickness on the bottom. In the past, I've gone too far and made the bottom too thin. So I'm always very careful just to check how thick the bottom is. I realized when I was thinking about how I was going to hold this bowl backwards that the little rubber nubbins on my big chuck weren't going to be able to hold the rim of this bowl. So I was going to have to make some custom brackets to hold the bowl in place while I worked on the bottom. So I copied the shape of the bowl and made eight brackets to hold the bowl in place. I put it on the lathe and I realized as I tightened it up that the shape wasn't quite going to work because the part of the curve next to the chuck was actually pushing the bowl away from the chuck. So I cut off that part of the curve and just made a space there so that the, the brackets when they get tightened up would push the bowl against the chuck and make it a, a lot more firm or, or steady hold to the bowl and it wouldn't, it wouldn't rattle around like it was. And th this actually worked really well. And then I could clean up the bottom. And I kept the tailstock in place just to hold it really well. Th this is the point at which you know, you've put three or four days of work into a piece and then it comes flying off the lathe and shatters on the floor. So I tend to be really careful at this point. I made a little indentation in the bottom just so the, the bowl would sort of sit on a little rim. And I used a scraper on the bottom just to smooth up the surface. And I sanded. And I didn't want to use the turning tools without the tailstock in place, so I used a Forstner bit to drill off the little nubbin where the tailstock was. And I sanded the, the very inside. And it was all done and ready for a finish. And this one I just used tongue oil and I put the finish on. And with, with this, I guess you put it, it's sort of similar to the linseed oil. You just, you put it on kind of thick and then you rub it off after a few minutes. It's a little shinier than what I'm used to, but, but it looks really nice. It doesn't look like there's a thick layer on there. It just looks like it's polished, which is, which is nice. And there we have it. I like how it came out. My wife says it looks like a cat poking its head up over the edge of a table, which I kind of like that idea. Thanks for watching.